uh, our, our next talk is uh, by my uh, dear teacher, uh, uh, Dr. Dr. J. Uh, J. Kennedy. Uh, everywhere I go say, uh, uh, I, I, I say, and what I have become is just because of uh, uh, J. K. Sir, and uh, he he is one of the best brains in ophthalmology in India and uh, in the world, and uh, uh, he is the chief surgeon uh, at and medical director at uh, uh, Shankaraya Hospital, uh, Coimbatore, and he heads the research and uh, development. Being at uh, uh, Shanghai Foundation uh, India, and he has to discredit uh, three patents uh, that have been filed uh, for uh, IOL designs and character processes. He has uh, trained many, many ophthalmologists from across India in cornea and refractive surgery, and uh, he was also part of uh, an expedition to train uh, surgeons in Cambodia and uh, Nigeria. He has been a pioneer in uh, temporal SICS, DAL, use of posterior iris claw, and has worked with the uh, ophthalmic industry to innovate uh, uh, solutions uh, relevant to eye care uh, in India. Uh, and uh, sir will be speaking on uh, Cornell also. Uh, over to you, sir. Yes. Thank you, Srini. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your kind words. And every year we are uh, doing this one. This time we are doing virtual uh, our uh, today's symposium. Um, I think uh, uh, we need to save some time. Uh, the corneal ulcers are common mistakes in our practice. What we are seeing a lot of uh, the corneal ulcer, as you know, in India, one of the capital of uh, corneal ulcers. So uh, this, for example, uh, what is the definition of an uh, corneal ulcer? It's a discontinuation of epithelium. It doesn't specify uh, in a textbook saying that infiltrate should be there, infection should be there, nothing. They don't specify uh, a discontinuation of epithelium. For example, this particular case, if you see it, there is a small uh, uh, defective epithelial defect with a ragged margins and uh, very nicely succumbed. There is no infiltrate. You need to see, you have to look at, there is no bacteria, fungus, nothing infiltrate. But looking at these margins, a lot of people suspect a viral etiology. And when you strain it, there's a, there's a very nice pattern that extends onto the conjunctival. Whenever you see a, a conjunctival, Staining, extending onto the corneal staining, and there is no infiltrate. It should be 100%. It will be a tarsal foreign body. Somewhere it will be sitting. Sometimes we cannot see it. Uh, many times you cannot see it. Sometimes we have to decongest the eye with the help of uh, nephazole eye drops or uh, brimoridin eye drops. When you put the drops and leave it for a few minutes, then again call back the patient. Once the congenital capillary is blanched out, you can see a nice foreign body there and uh, you can remove it. Then comes the second uh, very common one is the uh, uh, different types of is the bisting. So the patient says, I'm going in a, something hit my eye. It may be insect, he's not sure. So you, next day you will come with a uh, uh, cornea like this. And if you say see carefully, you can see unless you remove the, this is not an infiltrate, you see a hypopion. So people will get uh, usually the concept is highly infected because the patient is having, this is a reaction to a hypopion to the toxins. So unless this is very small, the best thing it looks, it's very, very, very tiny. Many times we removed it, just look at small uh, hair like thing. Uh, but it's so toxic unless you remove the bis somehow you have to remove it. So take the operation the operating room and it will be deep inside the cornea. Sometimes we enter into the antechamber and from there we peel it out. It won't get resolved. And these cases after a, just a, a few hours of antibiotics, say five to six hours of initial antibiotics, and you have to start uh, steroids, uh, intensive steroid therapy, then it, they resolve. For example, this particular case, you see the block, you see this black one, this uh, hypopion. So they resolve very well and regain vision, but it should be done as an emergency. If you leave it for more than 48 hours, the damage, whatever happens is uh, irreparable for the corneal endothelium. Then some cases, this is a, a simple case of marginal keratitis with a little exaggerated, but sometimes when you see this, I saw many places, many times, they diagnose as a PUK, peripheral ulcerative keratitis, and uh, do a lot of, it's a, just nothing but an exaggerated reaction all around with a uh, marginal immunomediated uh, response to the staphylococcal antigen. So we need to treat, treat these cases with a topical antibiotic and steroids and along with oral. Uh, in this case, my preference is azithromycin, not doxycycline. 
they work very well and they resolve very nicely. The other one which is emerging, how to differentiate? The cornea, you see a cornea, you see the uh, super, is superficial punctate um, uh, lesions. And uh, you see the lesions, they just looks like you did in a Photoshop and stuck over the cornea. It doesn't look like a real uh, SVK. If you see it like that, it's uh, mostly it is uh, not a, you are not dealing with uh, viral keratitis. Uh, this is a microsporidiasis uh, most of the times. And uh, the treatment is uh, uh, very different, but uh, we are following in South India fluconazole eye drops uh, four to six times a day. It's working very well to our surprise. This is what uh, Dr. My boss, M. Srinivasan suggested, and somehow it's working. So whenever you see a lesion and they look like very quiet, the surrounding cornea is very clear. They're just stuck on the cornea here and there as though you put uh, some painting, uh, you are dealing with microsporidiasis. You can see much better in this uh, picture. Then coming to the fluorescent stain and corneal, this is the one uh, one problem. Whenever uh, the resident stain, immediately better they take to the uh, uh, surgeon and uh, the treating surgeon. Once you stain and leave it for some time, the entire morphology of the cornea changes uh, the ulcer. The stain goes into the stroma and the entire thing will become stained up and you cannot, we cannot diagnose it. It becomes very difficult based on the morphological features of the corneal ulcer. Even at this stage, if somebody brings for me like this, I cannot say it's a fungal, early fungal or a, a dendritic keratitis. So whenever in doubt, don't stain. Show to the uh, consultant, then stain it. Don't stain first and uh, next uh, take the case to the consultant. So it becomes like this. Entirely, you cannot see, you cannot differentiate morphological features and uh, you need to do extensive scraping even then you may not find any clue. Then if you see carefully, uh, as Rini was discussing very nicely about the uh, tears problem in elderly, uh, somehow, uh, uh, as my boss told me, I am also very, uh, uh, one uh, who believes, for example, this is a linear horizontal line, if you can see, and uh, if you stain it, it will be my it will take up strain. The stro it will never go into the stroma, it will be only these are keratinized epithelium. This is not a uh, uh, superficial punctate keratitis of infective or inflammatory origin. This is a keratinized epithelium, and it will be at the uh, uh, blink between the upper lid and upper lid margin where the both uh. uh Meets this particular condition, we consider it is a uh, problem with the deficiency, the vitamin deficiency, um, uh, mostly uh, 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 B complex, uh, range of vitamins. We cannot be very specific. We have to treat them with uh, vitamins. They resolve very well. The lubricants alone will not solve this problem. And uh, this is a very nice case, uh, uh, severe. Keratitis, some minor trauma patient has given history. So they diagnosed as a severe case of a stromal infective keratitis. Uh, so it's a nice picture when you dilate and see it, it looks uh, very funny. So I took this photograph also. So when you look beyond the cornea, there is a congestion. So in slit lamp, it doesn't help. So these cases, please look with the torchlight also or in the daytime. This is actually a case of sclerokeratitis. There is a scleritis here, and there is a, this is a, a more a reactionary type of keratitis, the cornea, which needs a steroid, so not a, anything in etiology. So we miss when you look only at the cornea, if somebody brings in a busy day, say there is a corneal infection, keratitis, traumatic injury. So we are going to miss this type of, and uh, misdiagnose this type of conditions. So this is the patient, same patient. You see this area is there is scleritis and the other area is very quiet. So once we started and scleritis treatment patient resolved very well, responded very well. And there is a tiny uh, one uh, ulcer. This is a common one is the nocardial ulcer, which looks very nice. It mimics a fungal keratitis. And they heal very well with amic acid. This is the post-operative pictures. And uh, I just want to show one, this one. So you see the ulcer very nicely. And uh, another one minute, okay, Srini, 
uh, then this stroma will be very clear. And previously we used to believe in slit lamp. Now we got a very nice OCT. That's what I want to show you. If you see the OCT, you can see nicely in the posterior uh, portion, the elevations. So here applying the drops will not help because the drops, the antifungal drops cannot penetrate. So you need to give intracameral uh, amphotericin B. It works very well. And you have to repeat it. One, not one dose. We, what we found is you have to repeat three to four times every 48 hours. And the full strength, first dose, after that, we go for a half strength, full strength, giving a lot of reaction, fibrin membrane. And along with that, we found is uh, you have to give a topical NSAID, like a bromifenac. We found very effective four times a day. The patients are doing very well. And these are neurotropic ulcers. Okay, I want to show one more. Uh, of course, now we got a... Uh, the treatment is evolving is a photodynamic treatment for corneal ulcers. Now we are trying rose bengal with 532 light. Uh, the mistake we do here again is we just started doing this here is there is no point in trying to do this for a terminally given up case, everything gone. So when the ulcers start not responding, immediately better to do it, not to wait until the ulcer about to perforate, then do it getting perforated. You have to do the treatment at the right time. Just when you start the treatment, for a bacterial ulcer, within 20 for 72 hours, there is no response. Then, then go for this uh, type of adjuvant treatment.